Okay, so we're okay, coming back to this. Okay, so I will. I will stop this application. Okay, I will add one more uh, transformation. Okay, from the sample dot ed. Okay, so I will use the same variable and try to override that. And what I'm going to do is uh, map transformation. Okay, here uh, I'll use the lambda function. Uh, okay, element, and uh, I will just. Uh, only take the even numbers. Okay, so mod of two equal to, equal to zero. Okay, so we we pair, uh, we create a RDD and uh, we applied a, a sample transformation to create a sample out of this RDD. And from the sample RDD, we will try to get only the even numbers, and this we will collect it. Okay, so <clears throat> so this is not a. <clears throat> they should be filtered. Okay. So we will use uh, okay. One more transmission window. We'll use this for uh, filter. And the map transformation will just uh, multiply by yes ten. <coughs> Okay, so I just uh, uh, sampled the uh, uh, output. I'm just multiplying by 10. Uh, just to show you the sequence of transformation, uh, uh, how uh, it's applied. And uh, uh, so when the, uh, basically your, your job is getting created, I just want to show you this DAG and uh, uh, give the information. So let me run this program. So before we do collect, we, we are doing actually three transmission, sample, map, filter. So whenever you uh, collect operation perform, actual execution of this map filter and sample will happen. Okay. So our output is only the even numbers. Now we'll go and uh, open this again. Again, you so we have collect here, and then uh, okay. It is three tasks because why it is three tasks? We have three partitions, so each partition is in uh, each partition will be one task. But uh, I'm wondering why it is not showing the uh, the other transformations.
okay i'll find out so basically it has to show this uh, filter and uh, map and filter i don't know why it is not showing uh, task and all it's fine anyway uh, <clears throat> three tasks performed that's based on the number of partitions okay so again so example if i again i'll stop here okay so i will try to do uh, okay so here i did a collect and i will do one more uh, action operation that is uh, just uh, try to take take of some uh, five elements okay and i'll try to print this and again i will run this job so now we should see two uh, two uh, jobs inside our spark application because we applied two uh, action for operations one is a collect and another is a take not on this list it has to be not id sample number or id right yeah run it again Again, I will launch this. Okay, so so you see there is a two application as uh, uh, sorry two jobs created under this application. So one is for collect, one is for it says uh, run RDD. actually this is for take i don't know why okay let's open this so this is for run actually uh, take only but i don't know why it is not showing the specific take um, like collect as it says uh, Uh, Python already okay. It is for the um, uh, this is for take uh, operation okay. So for the two uh, action operation we perform, so we got a uh, we got a two two uh, two uh, jobs for your uh, application. Okay, so this is how the uh, Spark internally. it will manage uh, uh, number of jobs and stages and tasks now we will come back to this so when we have this program so when we run this program so internally it is going to convert that into logical plan and the uh, physical plan then the physical plan will have uh, basically the physical plan is uh, nothing but a set of task either in the form of task and that that all those tasks are run on the cluster okay so whatever uh, Uh, you see this physical plan and a uh, uh, logical plan and execution plan is nothing but basically the dag direct acyclic graph so that's what you see in this uh, uh, dashboard okay so you see here uh, there is a job here and if we go to that uh, job um, and the stage 
so this is the DAG which is prepared. Okay, so uh, the DAG consists of uh, uh, finally in the on the form of task, right? So the tasks are run on the Spark execution engine. So what we they say here is basically Spark execution engine translates user code into series of series of tasks. So task or operation is a basically a DAG direct execution job. Okay, so. Uh, operations are DAG in nature, uh, meaning execution flow goes from one operation to another task. Okay, it's not in the uh, 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 cyclic manner, it's a cyclic manner. And the Spark achieves this uh, tracking of each operation on data set using um, concepts are RDD. Yeah, so basically uh, internally, the Spark actually uh, works in the in the uh, in the uh, form of RDD. Even if you go work on the data frame, so finally when it runs on Spark cluster, it is it will be run in the form of RDD. Uh, okay, so yeah, the Spark architecture is built uh, from the ground up for speed and efficiency. We saw this already. So basically, RDD consists of two operations. Okay, so uh, so Spark uh, uh, you can run a Spark code using a three uh, different uh, three broad uh, way. One is CLI. We saw Spark CLI for running your PySpark code. PySpark CLI. If you want to run uh, Spark with the Scala code, you can use a, a, a Spark hyphen shell, which is also commonly in utility for running your uh, Spark code with uh, um, Scala. And you have one more CLI called Sparker to run your uh, Spark code with uh, our programming language. And uh, we are going to see this uh, uh, Spark Summit utility in the next class, which is how to submit your jobs, the Spark job. So here I ran from the ID. Okay, so I use the PyCharm ID to run my Spark application. Okay, so how do you, in a, when you go to production, uh, how do you run your uh, Spark job uh, using a Spark Summit utility? <clears throat> how do you, you may use uh, 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 any uh, scheduling tool like uh, OZ or uh, Airflow, which uh, internally uses the Spark Summit command. I will tell you later, but we will, before go to OZ and Airflow, we'll use the Spark Summit utility and run our application. And the third category is basically you can run through notebooks like uh, uh, Zupyter or Zeppelin. And also you can establish the JDBC connectivity using Thrupt server and you can run your uh, Spark SQL uh, queries. So once you, whatever way you use, at the end of the day, the data, the program is going to, uh, the Spark application is going to run on your Spark cluster. So how the Spark application is basically uh, uh, organized is based on uh, application, then you will have uh, one or more jobs job will have stages and tasks. So this is the like typical uh, Spark architecture which you see in the uh, documentation page of spark.org, uh, apache.spark.org. Apache so the driver program is nothing but what we write here. Okay, so whatever the code we write is basically a driver program. Okay. So this program, uh, so this program uh, uh, here we say Spark context. In the so this is the this architecture used from the uh, uh, Spark uh, 1.x itself. From 1.x, they're using the same uh, uh, architecture diagram. So basically, it is uh, now it you can think of as this is a Spark session object. But anyway, internally it has Spark context. So the Spark session object uh, talk to the cluster manager and uh, get the resources. Uh, resources nothing but basically the executor and uh, uh, the core number of posts for executors. So basically it gets uh, uh, basically the uh, uh, the resources to launch your JVM on this uh, cluster nodes. Okay, then uh, your Spark code uh, will be converted into DAG. Okay, uh, basically uh, logical and physical plans be prepared based on your uh, uh, set of transformation action you perform on your code. And finally, those tasks will be run on this Spark cluster. Uh, the, uh, the executors on the worker nodes. 
uh, this just same i just put it in same diagram in in different way so when you do spark submit so your driver code uh, uh, which creates a spark session object and uh, spark context uh, so these are the different cluster managers standalone uh, yarn or miso so runs your task here um, okay so we, we when you uh, run a code so basically either you this is mostly it is created uh, say example you have a file in uh, sdfs okay so the sdfs will have uh, blocks for your file right so uh, whatever whenever we store a file in sdfs it is going to convert it into blocks so when we read a, uh, the file from sdfs the spark creates number of partitions based on the number of blocks uh, you have it in sdfs this is in the terms of in the case of file in sdfs okay so if uh, you are reading from local machine i think it creates a two partition with which we saw in the last session also but in general when we read from sdfs the number of partition is uh, equivalent to the number of blocks in sdfs and then you can apply uh, uh, either the uh, um, other transformations like uh, 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 map uh, filter flat map and uh, map partitions everything so you will you will actually uh, get the uh, the another rdd because whenever you apply transformation you get a new rdd so here uh, this this uh, represents the below two two lines of code right so here what i'm doing is spark session object dot spark context dot text file i'm mean, reading a file from sdfs okay so the lines rdd is basically uh, this portion of the uh, uh, this line represents this portion of the diagram and the next line applies this from uh, from uh, when i apply filter it goes applied on the elements in this rdd and generate the new rdds so basically uh, the lines which contains uh, error keyword it just gives the target so this is the flow so basically you have spark internally the it, it actually goes in this flow and follows this flow. so any any doubt uh, i actually uh, you can actually stop me whenever you have doubt i assume if you uh, not having doubt but still you can uh, i'm just uh, uh, tell me if you have any any questions do you have any any questions no problem okay all right so we'll see a few more transformations Okay, so there is a uh, union transformation. Union, you know, union is operation is same in everywhere. So when you want to union uh, um, <coughs> join two data set, means when you want to merge, it's like not a join. You can want to merge two data set. You can use a union operation. So example, I have RDD, which consists of one to five, and another RDD which is consists of um, Six to ten. So I just create uh, uh, this RDD number number RDD one number RDD two. Uh, when I perform a union operation, it's going to merge these two uh, elements. This do RDD and gives the elements from one to ten. So this can be applied on the numbers uh, string RDDs as well. Uh, I'm just not uh, again discussing about uh, uh, how to create this passage subject. So this is the format. So whenever you write a Spark, Spark application, you have to create a Spark session object and then do the uh, your transformations based on your requirement. Your, your what are the, uh, the business logic you want to develop? So it's based on your uh, uh, transformations. So based on the requirement, uh, the business uh, uh, logic, you use the specific uh, uh, transformation and actions and perform. So finally, you close your spark session object so this is a typical uh, uh, applications uh, means the uh, 
the structure of the Spark application. Okay, it differs based on your uh, requirement. So I'm just not again going discussing about uh, 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 the Spark session object creation and all. Uh, just uh, so union operation, first RDD, basically a union of second RDD. It's going to merge it. So if we run this program. So this was uh, two RDDs and after uh, uh, union, you get this merged RDD. And uh, when we go for, okay. When you go to the next transformation, which is, uh, you know, this is the union is done. The next is the intersections. Um, so basically intersection is going to give the the common uh, uh, elements from two different uh, data set, right? So first RDD, second RDD, uh, which is a common, uh, one is a common, and I think one and three. Okay, so, so it's basically a first RDD, intersection, second RDD. So it's very similar to union, only the logic is different. Yeah, from this uh, you got one and three. This is uh, intersection, and the next transformation is the distinct. Is same uh, distinct operation, whichever is unique, it is going to return unique number of elements. So basically, uh, you have uh, one is being duplicated uh, twice, and it's three times it is occurring, so it is going to return only once. And two also occurring two times, six occurring two times, three occurring two times. So it is going to give the distinct, unique uh, uh, elements from this uh, RDD. So what, how do you just RDD dot a distinct you have to use it. This is just, uh, this is how the use you need to use the transformation, this distinct transformation. So this is our input and the output was 2, 6, 10, 1 and 3, which are basically a distinct, uh, uh, the basic unique elements from this RDD. And uh, then the next uh, transformation is uh, group by Group by key. So group by key and uh, reduce by key basically works on the key value pair. So still uh, uh, probably the distinct and uh, intersect and all this we worked on. So mostly it is uh, worked on a uh, RDD of either string or numbers. So when you want to use uh, group by uh, RDD, you need to have a key value pair so because uh, it is going to group based on a key and value will be uh, group. So if we have uh, uh, key value pairs, um, like uh, so this is my list, okay, so three, five, uh, one, five, uh, and one. Okay, this is my list. And I just want to say, example, if you want to find out uh, uh, number of uh, alum, uh, number of times each word occurring, it's kind of word count program, right? So how do you find out? So you need to convert this uh, RDD of uh, string into key value pairs. So we we can we convert this list into RDD using a parallelized method. And from RDD, uh, you need to 
this has RD, basically RDD of strings. So we have to convert it to key value pairs. How do you create, you can use a map transformation, take each element, make a, a tuple, okay. So which basically element comma, you assign a counter as one. And when you do group by, so it is going to group the, uh, uh, group the key, group the values based on a key. So we have uh, three one occurring only once. So it is going to give three, then one. And five occurring two times, it is going to give five of one comma one. And one occurring twice, again, it's going to give uh, one comma, the string one comma uh, numbers one comma one comma one because two times. So we just uh, sum up these values. So you get this. You're going to get a, a three comma one and five comma two and uh, one comma two. So let's run this. Okay, so, uh, so here, this is the final output. Uh, okay, so with this, I will uh, stop here. Okay, so we will see uh, uh, remaining uh, transformation. Uh, and we have few, uh, uh, we all the sections operation we saw collected. We'll see other uh, few thing we have. We have uh, transformations to few more transformation to cover, and also we have uh, uh, we'll discuss about uh, uh, some of the action operations, like save saving into the uh, saving the output to the file. Those actions we'll see tomorrow. Okay, so I will share this uh, code uh, and uh, try to practice on your uh, environment and let me know if you have any queries. Any any questions? Hey, buddy, can you please explain the group by again, please? Uh, group by key. See, group by key is basically uh, applied on the uh, key value pairs. Okay. Okay. okay so uh, I'll put it in two different. Uh, I'll change this code. So basically. Uh, this is our input, right? So this input, uh, so this is our input. So this one I'm creating like this. I'm just creating a OK, 
Okay, so once you because group by uh, key uh, or transformation will uh, will be uh, applied on the data set which has a key value pairs. So okay, so you should have a key value pairs. So this will consider uh, this as a key and this as a value. Okay, so you should have a RDD of key value pairs when you apply a group by. So that's why I'm just creating a. a uh, just uh, RDDR, which just it has string, which is in this representation. I am making into this representation as a key value pairs using a map transformation. Then we applied the key. So group by it's kind of a, a SQL operation. Group by you give the column name. Here, when you give group by column name, what happens? It's going to group the uh, columns in in a spa in your uh, uh, SQL table, say example, group by department. It's going to do the group uh, based on the uh, distinct number of departments. Similarly, it is here grouping based on the distinct uh, number of uh, keys. So three is grouped, five is grouped, one is grouped. So you get the uh, result like this. When you apply group by, uh, this will be input and this will be your output. So distinct keys and respective values. And finally, I'm actually applying a, a map transformation to do the sum up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so what I will do, I will use the, I'll put the all this code in the same uh, link which I shared yesterday. Uh, so no, day for yesterday, I shared you one link. I'll put it here. You can access the code from uh, this location. Already, the link is shared in the uh, WhatsApp group. You can go and take the code from that place. Okay, so the code is here. You can take this code and uh, uh, practice in your uh, environment. Okay, so we will discuss tomorrow remaining things. Anything else? All right, thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye.